Introducing Roxio Game Capture HD Pro, the quick and easy way to capture, stream, edit, and share HD footage from your Xbox or PlayStation. This tutorial will show you how easy it is to hook up the Roxio Game Capture device to your PlayStation 3, capture your gameplay footage, and share it online. First, let's run through what's included in the box. There's the Game Capture HD Pro device, a USB cable, a getting started guide, and the Roxio Game Capture software. You're also going to need a component video cable. If you don't already have one, you'll have to purchase that separately. The Game Capture device sits between your TV and your gaming console and essentially acts as a pass-through. Before you begin connecting anything, make sure that your console is powered off. Connect the component audio and video cables to the corresponding color outputs of the Roxio GameCat HD Pro device and your PS3. Next, connect the component audio and video cables to the corresponding color outputs of the Roxio GameCat HD Pro device and your TV. Leave the HDMI cable connected to your TV as well. Once it's plugged into both your TV and console, you're ready to connect the Roxio GameCat HD Pro device to your laptop or PC using the supplied USB cable. Depending on what type of cable you were using previously, you may have to change your TV input. Use your remote and set your input to either HDMI or component, depending on which cable you used. If you were running your PS3 with an HDMI cable previously, you will need to adjust the display settings on your console to accept the new component AV cable that you're now using to connect to the Roxio Game Capture device. On your PS3, go to your display settings and select Video Output Settings. Switch to the Component D Terminal options and confirm the change. You can remove the HDMI cable between your PS3 and TV now. Choose the resolution that your TV supports and be sure to leave the 1080p box unchecked. Then check all the other supported resolutions that your TV offers and confirm the change. Now, select the Audio Output Settings and change Audio to Audio Input Connector and confirm okay, the change. Okay, we're ready to go. Insert a game disc into your console and then launch the application by clicking on the desktop icon. Click the blue Capture button to go to the Capture interface. On the left side, you will see all of your capture settings. If your setup has been done properly, you'll see that the capture device is listed next to Source. You can also set your recording resolution and duration, change your saved video location, and name your recorded files. The default resolution is 720p, but you can set it to 1080i or 1080p for the best HD recording. On the right side, you'll see your preview screen, which is currently showing your PlayStation game. Click the Start Capture button to begin capturing your gameplay on screen. The button will turn red to show that it's recording. To stop, simply click the button again. It will turn back to green to indicate that your recording has stopped. You can also use hotkeys to start and stop capture in both normal window and full screen mode. The default Start Capture key is F6, and the Stop Capture key is F7. If you'd like to assign different keys, you can customize these in the Options panel. To edit your gameplay clips, select the desired thumbnail in the lower part of the screen. Click on the Import button to send these to the video editor. I'm going to show you how easy it is to edit, add in transitions and music, and upload your video to sharing sites. But first, let's take a quick look to see how the video editor is set up. The interface has four main areas. There's the Option Panel, the Preview Window, Libraries, and the Timeline. There's also a Storyboard mode if all you want to do is add some transitions and then share your video. To start editing, find your footage in the media selector on the right-hand side. You can point Video Wave to a specific directory so that anything you record is always in the same spot. Find the gameplay footage you'd like to work with. Drag and drop it into the first slot of the timeline. Once it's here, you can trim it down or select a small segment of it to use. Now let's add another clip into the second slot. Now we're going to add a transition between these two clips. Click on the Effect Selector to browse the available options. To preview what it will look like, click the Play icon in the bottom corner of each transition. When you find one that you're happy with, drag and drop it into the transition slot between the two clips. It's that easy. Now you have a cool transition that takes you from the first clip to the second clip. Next we'll add a music track. Now if you don't want the audio from your gameplay clip to be played over your music, you'll want to mute it under the speaker icon. To add in your music track, simply click on the music note. 
This will bring up your computer directory so you can browse through to find the music track you want. Click on your chosen song and hit OK. You can see in your timeline that your soundtrack has been added. Once you've finished your masterpiece, you're going to want to share it. There's a number of output formats and quality options, but right now I'm just interested in uploading my video to YouTube. To do that, all you have to do is click on the Share Video button at the top of your screen. If you haven't already, you'll want to sign into your YouTube and or Facebook account. You'll then be able to enter a title and description for your video, add tags, and select a category. Then click OK and post the video to the selected sharing site. Depending on how long your video is, it may take several minutes to completely upload and show up on your YouTube channel and Facebook page. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. For more editing tips, be sure to watch our tutorial on editing in VideoWave. Have fun, and happy gaming.